So welcome all, uh, welcome to Michal, and then sorry if I get your last name wrong, Bieliski from uh, Lizard FS. Um, the floor is yours. Now? Yeah. Ah, I can hear myself. OK, so we had some problem connecting my other notebook, so I don't have the introductory slides. Um, what, what I just want to show is I'm, I'm the community manager for LizardFS, and we are basically a distributed file system. And what I just wanted to show was how easy it is to set it up. Yeah, we, I have another talk tomorrow in the uh, SDS dev room where I explain for 45 minutes how it all works. But for me, the most important part of our project is it's just a 10 minutes job to set it up. Right, so I just prepared a couple of containers to set up the system. The system consists out of uh, always a metadata server and a couple of chunk servers. Um, what I prepared, uh, uh, <laughs> the prepared containers already have the packages on because I didn't know of if the network would be working. Um, two years ago, I had the experience that it didn't, so I didn't want to risk that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically it. So. <sighs> I will first create a master server. Is that visible? I think I move it a bit here. Can you make it bigger? Yeah, that's what I'm just trying. Huh? You can you can sorry, we can't help you with that, but you can go to the live stream and watch it there on your device. <laughs> Can I make it bigger? Yeah, probably. Just don't know. No. Anyway, so, but I think it will be so simple that there is not that much that you cannot see. So, by by default, the system assumes that the master server is called MFS master. So my most of my configuration is just to add an entry into the host file for MFS master. And then just go into the configuration directory and copy over the, uh, the sample configuration files. So this is all too small for me. And then copy over an empty uh, metadata file in the MFS directory. And then all I have to do is start. Oh, wait. I still have to let the master server own the stuff. And then all I have to do is start the master server. Now I have a running master server. You can't read that. <laughs> well, where is it? Yeah, I can't. Uh, no. Yeah, it doesn't work. I tried that already. Wrong desktop for me. 
Yeah, I wanted to present it on the Apple, but the converter to VGA doesn't work. So. Um, anyway. Hmm. I can't do it, so. Yeah, I cannot do it. <sighs> and I have all the links on the other computer, so. Yeah, I can't. I don't see it myself. Great. No infusion. No. Ah, and I have to start the the monitoring service as well. <sighs> what? <laughs> Blind typing. Um. <laughs> Let me see what port it's running on four two five. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's not working. What am I doing? What is wrong? Nine four twenty five. At least that's what it writes here. But I can't see it. Great. Okay. Yeah. I can see that my master server is running. Right. That's all I wanted to show. I just tried it on the wrong machine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so what I do next is connect a chunk server. Yeah. If I would do that on that machine, on my machine, that would be simpler, but on that one, I don't know how. <laughs> anyway. I have to get a different converter for tomorrow. So, what I did on the chunk server is basically the same entry in the host file. I think that's visible. It's just for the MFS master, so that the chunk server can find its, uh, can find the metadata server. Hey!
Okay. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the MFS master entry is not that hard to see. <laughs> so the container has the chunk server package installed. It's just on Debian, it's apt get desired fs chunk server, and on CentOS, it's the same stuff with yum, right? Um, and again, I prepared uh, a directory for the chunk server where it could keep its chunks. It's called wizardfs1. And all I have to do now is see the right keys in the dark <laughs> and just tell the chunk server where it can find its stuff. So I just put here the directory. That would be fun. And just copy over the default files and start the chunk server. Oops. Probably running already. So if I go back to my monitoring. I see my chunk server. Yeah, I can see my chunk server. I can see that it has a disk. And that's basically all. What I can do next is add another chunk server. Well, this chunk server is. Uh, CentOS. I have another chunk server that's running on Debian. So I do exactly the same thing. If I see the keys. I really don't care. So now I have a second one on running on CentOS. <coughs> now, let me see if I manage to connect a dark client. So for my client, I do exactly the same with the host file so that it can find the metadata server. And then I just tell him to where yeah. I set him up where he has to mount, where he should mount the, the distributed file system. And just tell him, go ahead and do it. Oops. Yeah, there it is. So I basically now have a mounted distributed file system on two servers. That was all. <laughs> Any questions? No questions. <laughs> That's a very silent question. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for the talk. Um, is there any portability? Is it easy to port over to say a BSD family or is it straight Linux? You can run it on any Linux, you can run it on any BSD. I run it on Solaris. Um, you can probably run it on HPAX as well. I didn't try, but it shouldn't be that much of a problem. AIX should work as well. There is a commercial Windows client. And there is a commercial tape chunk server, so that you could basically talk to a tape library like to a chunk server. Thank you. Uh, so we have time for one more question. Anybody? Well, if there are no more questions, then uh, thank you all. And uh, thank you, Alexander. Thank you. Thank you.